Okay, so talking about, I've talked about the description, I've talked about the provenance, I've talked about the condition. Hey, listen, in, in a subsequent session with, with you folks, I'm going to talk about the various terms of conditions that you should be focused on or learn more about, right? In some ways, you can get a conservation specialist to help you with some of those things. In some ways, it's just age and there's not that much you can do about it. Everyone should, if you're going to look at auctioning and really, really be more um, focused as a part of your goals on acquiring master work and acquiring pieces that are extremely, um, extremely aged, you, you should find a conservation person to help you um, keep your collection going and, and help to support you in your, in your auctioning um, goals. All right. So talked about size, talked about description, talked about sig some signatures are obviously fake. If I were you, they're different. There are different websites you can go on to look at, to see auction sign, um, artist signatures. Um, Hey, there's so much to unpack with just seeing the auction um, information, the description of the lot. Okay. So when you say, what's the piece, the piece, um, you'll see lot one, lot two, lot three, lot is the actual merchandise or piece. There may be more than one piece in a lot. Guess what? I just picked up a contemporary artist and I, and I was excited. Kesson, I was excited about this artist and I got two pieces in one lot. I, then that just happened a week ago. Two pieces of contemporary artwork and by the same artist in one lot. And so a lot can be multiple pieces and a part of it is if it's a book, if it's jewelry, but even in artwork, in, all, in, all, in, in artwork I've seen a lot where there were six or seven or 10 pieces. Um, I saw that in the case of Romare Beard and I think somebody was um, auctioning up a whole suite of his work and there were multiple pieces from the Odyssey suite, multiple pieces um, from some of the other series that he's done as a part of one lot. So one lot doesn't just have to be one piece of artwork, it can be multiple pieces of artwork in one lot. Understand, multiple piece, um, pieces of artwork in one lot means the propensity for it to get much higher than what is indicated is very possible, okay? Um, you will also see in, in that auctioning uh, your estimate that the lowest point of the piece could be uh, $1,000. The highest point of the, of the piece could be $5,000. It's normally not that wide, but you'll see that that's what the auction house is going for. And many times, it will go way beyond the highest estimate. And I've seen that happen as well. But these are the things that you have to be mindful of. Now, I've just gone completely off script because I'm just telling you um, the things that I've encountered and how you can use this information to help you be successful in, in your acquisition goals. Hey, listen, many auction houses have reserves. So there may it be, and so what is it a reserve? A reserve is the, the number, the lowest number the consigner is willing to accept for the work. Um, or the auction house is willing to accept for the work. So, well, Sheila, how does that go? What does that look like? Well, that looks like this. If there is a piece there where the opening bid is $1,000, but the but the consigner, which is the person that owns the work, between the consigner and the auction house saying, before they'll let it go, at minimum, they'll accept this three. And I bid 2,500, and I'm thinking I'm excited, yay, 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 because I got this piece for 2,500. You will see that the auction house will pass that lot, and you didn't get it. Why? Because the reserve, the reserve figure was $3,000. Okay, the reserve figure was $3,000. So here we are at our, uh, you know, just, just a piece of the baseline information in your research 
of auctioning. So let me backtrack a little bit because I've talked to you a lot about what you should see in the description. What you should see is the description. You should see the medium of the work. You should see the size of the work. You should see the provenance of the work. Um, you should also see um, the condition of the work, right? So you should see other information about the work, the name of the work, right? The, the artist. Um, that created the work and the date when the work was created. If it's an original work, you should see that it is an original. If it's a print, they should be telling you the medium or the printing style in which the work was printed. Whether it's a wood, um, wood block or linoleum cut, whether it's an offset lithograph, whether it's a G clay, or whether it's, um, if it's an original, a mixed media, or um, I said silk screen, uh, silk screen if it's a print, right? So you should see the medium, right? You should see whether or not it's an original, whether or not it's a, well, you'll see from the pictures if it's a sculpture, um, whether or not in some way it's three dimensional. So all of that you should get in the sense of what type of work it is, what category it falls into, and the medium of the work. Um, you may even get, um, you may even get, sometimes folks will give you information about um, what went into the creation, what is the work about, what is the work about, right? Um, if it's a reflection of a book, if it's a part of an illustration of a book and it, and it was um, original drawing based upon a book, it may give you that information if the consigner is aware. The other thing that it will tell you is the lot number. All right, so if there's an auction that's taking place where there are 100 lots in the auction, that may be the, the piece on which you, in which you're interested may be lot 75. All right, now, here's the other piece that's important, is the terms of um, sale. It will have information in there about the buyer's premium. Um, so when you're thinking, folks, that if the hammer price on, if your hammer price and you, and you think you won something that's three thousand dollars, and you're thinking, oh man, I got, I got this Romare Bearden original, um, I got this Charlie Palmer original, um, I got this Jacob Lawrence original or I got this Carrie James Marshall original for $3,000. Yeah, not quite $3,000. So there's what is called a buyer's premium. That is somewhat, it's, a, it's an, a, an additional fee that's tacked on to the hammer price, right? Or to, that with the hammer is. So the hammer, the hammer, the gavel went down on 3,000 but there's an additional fee as a buyer you're going to have to pay for that for that piece. Now listen, this is what I'm talking about about what your bidding strategy is because when you're talking about what your maximum bid can be, you need to in indicate what think in your mind whether that maximum bid is going to be the maximum bid on the hammer price or the maximum bid on the hammer price and the buyer's premium together. Depending, different auction houses have different rules on the buyer's premium. But um, what I've seen is that the higher the work is, the higher the, the work is valued at being, um, that can determine in some auction houses the, the, the buyer's premium. On average, you may see where the buyer's premium is 25%. Right? So what does that mean? Okay, so what that means is that means that if your hammer price was $3,000, then you need to take 25%, see what 25% of the 3,000 is, and add that to what? What you're going to have to pay for the piece. And you're saying, Sheila, is that it? Is that, then that would be the amount? 
right? So we know that 3,000, right? So that means for $3,000, that I'm gonna say approximately 450, how's that, is that my quick math? $450 would be added to that 3,000. And that would be your cost if the auction house is not requiring tax. So some auction houses will ask, you will have to pay taxes depend on some auction houses and where they're located, okay? And then you say, well, Sheila, is that it? Is that it? Is that it? So it would be the 3,300, what? 3,400, no, 3,450, off the top of my head, 3,450 for that 3,000 hammer price? And then plus the tax, which may be 6% or how much it is in whatever state you're participating in an auction. Because it's not, you. while you may be home in the comfort of your own home or in your workplace or wherever in your office is, the, it's, 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 the, it's the tax of the tax laws for the location of the auction house and where that auction house is located. All right? So is that it, Sheila? Is that it? Yeah, no. Because if that auction house is out of state, unless you're willing to drive there or fly there, guess what? You have to pay a shipping fee. And that shipping piece, that fee, is determined by the size of the piece and the weight of the piece. All right? So you need to kind of factor in those things. If you don't factor in anything else, factor in that buyer's premium. Because while you're thinking you're getting a good deal on something, by the time you add that buyer's premium and the taxes to it, you might realize that it's not such what? A bargain. So, so, so when you're looking at all the information about that lot, please remember to look at what the percentages are and the scales are. Now let's talk about the type of auctions, right? There are various types of auctions. There are absentee auctions where there's really no live, right? That the bidding is going through um, leaving absentee bids where you're basically going into, um, you're leaving via email or via portal what your bid is from um, on, on that particular lot. And if they're using absentee bidding, um, you may, they will send you a notification as to whether or not you have won the bid or lost a bid. Now, let me just say this. In many cases, there's just absentee bid, bidding as a type of auction. In the number of auctions, um, absentee bids are accompanied with the live auction or the online auction. Just like the online auction and the live auction may uh, be complement each other. I'm seeing more and more auctions when I'm going to participate in auctions for the last couple of weeks where I'm seeing where there's a live screen in the portal and then there's the online bidding that's going on. It is, it is, it, it is truly amazing to me to see someone on the floor bidding for the same piece I'm bidding for casting online, right? And then it's like, oh, we have an invaluable bidder and they're bidding $1,000. Okay, we have three paddle 875 on the floor, it's bidding 1,500. And then, oh, we got an online bidder coming back with 1,700. That thing is insane to me. I mean, is it just to watch all of that, to understand that your competition, your competition, um, yes, your competition, Competition. There are other people all over in different parts of the country interested in the same work in which you're interested. There are people in the, on the auction room floor that are interested in the same work you're interested, right? And you gotta remember that. Don't think that because there are a number, we had three people to put in an absentee bid. That doesn't mean that you're, and you're the higher bidder, did that this weekend. You're the highest bidder, you're winning. That's what it told me, you're winning. And then when I said, okay, and then you thinking, oh, because I'm winning at the time that the lot comes up, I got it. No. No, 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 that's not what happens. And then there's the live portion. 
So guess what? This past weekend, I left Absentee Bids, Kirsten. I left Absentee Bids, and guess what happened? <laughs> I had to participate in the live in order to be victorious in getting both of those lots, right? And so sometimes it works out that if you leave an Absentee Bid, you will be victorious. A lot of times, though, not such the case. So we talked to you about Absentee Bidding. Live bidding where you're actually in that... Um, auction house on that floor and you're bidding and then there's online bidding I've talked to you about invaluable I've talked to you about live auctioneers I've talked to you about a number of the auction houses that they on their own have their own um, live auction websites or portals so that's the one thing the one thing about as we talk about online bidding the one thing that's great about online bidding is that you can establish a username and password to get access right you can also through the online bidding um, indicate those artists in which you're interested right and they every time there's work coming up by the artist you will get an email and now they got fancy man nancy they got fancy now they will text you if you leave your cell phone number they'll text you and this is what i love about participating online for some you know used to be back in the day and i don't want to mention any of the names of my collector friends because we because because they're also just as much in the auctioning game as i am and they'll call me and say hey sis hey man what's going on have you uh you know so and so is up for auction yeah man i saw that but I, it's lot 275 man i ain't got all day to be sitting in front of my computer waiting for 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 lot 275 and, and so guess what a lot of a lot of the auction houses do even in the online when using the online portal they'll say they'll 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 send you an email or they'll send you a text above and they'll say your lot is 15 lots away Right. So you now have comfort where you're not stuck in the house all day waiting for your auction to come up. It's, it's, your lot is 10 is 10 lots away. Your lot is five lots away. Your lot is up next. Right. And guess what? I didn't used to have the 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 cell phone feature where they could text me. I now have the cell phone feature where they text me how far my lot is away for coming up on deck. So there's a lot of functions that are great with that. Um, they'll remind you, hey, the auction is tomorrow. Hey, you know, so, so even with some of the auction houses that now have their own portals, they're able to have some of the same functionality. But that's one of the perks of being, um, having a username and password and, and all of that. Now, here's the other thing. You ready? You ready? You ready? These auction portals will also allow you to leave your credit card information for payment. So that when the invoice is generated after the auction and the auction house settles its business, you will receive an invoice and all you have to say is click on pay. They take that pay. They take payment from that credit card information you left in that portal. So you don't have to go back and forth. The only thing that you need to make sure of is that the shipping is included. If the shipping's not included, you will have to call the auction house directly and, and make shipping arrangements. Now, many uh, um, auction houses have their own shipping department in the auction house that they will send it out. But a number of the auction houses have what they call third-party shipping. And third-party shipping is, you know, um, those UPS stores or FedEx's stores or shipping companies that are closest to them, that they're, they've given you their number, right? They've given, they've given you their telephone number, excuse me, and their information, and you contact them about shipping your work. Can I tell you a story? I want to tell you a little bit of a story. Had an auction house up in, I want to say Massachusetts or in the New England area. I was able to get a, um, a, a, a Shona sculpture, not having any perception of size. 
right? So even though some some in some images they'll put the coke, the little sick the can, and they put that, and they put that so that you can see the what the the relationship of size is. This was a few years ago, and I wanted a large Shona bust, a Shona sculpture bust, and so. Um, Oh my gosh, I'm going so far off script. And so I, I actually was victorious in getting this piece. And I'm not even going to tell you how much I got the piece for, but it was way under $1,000. All right. And um, I had to get the piece shipped to me. Um, as a number of the sculpture works I've gotten through, um, through auction, of course, had them shipped to me. A couple of pieces have been crated, so on and so forth. So, okay, so we were, we were getting it shipped or whatever. They did the shipment. They had their own house shipping department. So I paid them the, their shipping fee, right? And I was just waiting to get the piece. So they came back, they sent me an email and they said, hey, Dr. Wright, we're gonna be, we're gonna ship it to you on this date. Um, of course, I had to go to work because, you know, I got to be able to pay for the artwork, right? So I went to work, and but I asked my mother, I said, Mom, do you have anything scheduled? She said, no. And um, I said, hey, can you come out and sit at the house because there's a, there's a shipment coming. Man, they came rolling through my development at that time with this big old 18-wheeler. And, and I was in a small development. And I had a long driveway. So they were rolling through with the 18-wheeler. And that 18-wheeler, folks, was them leaving Massachusetts, going down the eastern seaboard and delivering those the, the lots that had been secured and paid for, going up and down the eastern seaboard, dropping it off, as, as, as they get to the different states, right? Here's the thing. So I had a long driveway, a bit large 18-wheeler, right? Couldn't get into my driveway. So they had to bring the piece in from the street. Now, I can literally, from where I'm sitting in, in, in Mecca, I can, I can look around and see that piece, right? Humongous piece of an uh, um, a Af uh, a African princess with a ponytail, right? And I think it was, it's a blue opal. I think it's green opal. Yeah, I think it's green opal is the stone from Zimbabwe. And it took two big burly guys to get that thing off the 18 wheeler truck up my long driveway. So by the time my mom said, by the time they got in the front door, they were like, man, where you want it? And they dropped it at the first clean space that was good for it at the door, right? I mean, on the side of the stairs. Listen, my mom said they were just like big burly dudes, big burly dudes turning blood red from both of them. That is literally a three person needing to carry that piece but these two big dudes and so what are you saying Sheila shipping is and how it's shipped is a big deal because you don't want to invest three four five six thousand dollars or even if it's seven hundred dollars into a piece that you're really interested in and have value in and and you do nothing but you get there and guess what the piece is damaged Right. And so these are the things that you have to consider in your pricing. If, if you're looking at a sculpture, folks, let me just say it's not it's, it's nothing wrong with you asking um, the auction house. Do you know this, the weight of the piece? Because really, you need to know that as well when it comes to what the shipping costs will be. Okay, so just some pearls of wisdom there. Um, there's sealed bidding. There's also um, open bidding and uh, uh, and descending bidding. Listen, descending is normally when folks are like auctioning for equipment, commercial or put equipment or planes. Man, I can't remember. I was remember that there was an auction that was available where they were auctioning off planes. So net auctions are can there are a number of things that can occur 
or a number of things that can be auctioned off in these auction houses. So just keeping all of those things in mind. So I've talked, we've talked a lot about um, what you're seeing when you actually go to a portal. And I've talked to you a lot about, I've referenced a lot about invaluable.com. I've referenced a lot about um, um, liveauctioneers.com. Guess what? There is an e-commerce site that I'm sure many of us have visited that to some extent is a form of auctioning online, and that's eBay. Um, if you go out to e eBay, has everything under the sun. They have, they have kitchen products, um, kitchen appliances. They have everything under the sun. They also have art on there. So art, eBay, I have to tell you, there are times on eBay where you can find some incredible finds. And there are times on eBay where the description's a little bit distorted and you're thinking you're getting something that you're not actually getting. I've, I've, I've actually been there. But it's not, it does not mean that the, the eBay is not a resource to you as a collector. You just have to be really, really clear on the description. And if you have questions, again, ask the buyer for more information, additional images. If they're not willing to give you that, then maybe you should reconsider acquiring a particular work in which you're interested on eBay. Not saying don't do it, I'm just saying make sure you have all the information you need to make an educated decision about value of the piece, condition of the piece, and whether or not that goes into you acquiring the piece. There are a couple of other sites that I did not mention. I'm so focused on in, in live and so focused on invaluable, but there's there's um, Artsy, Artsy.net, and with Artsy, it's not necessarily auctioning, but it is a different. It's it's they do allow some auctioning functionality, or they also allow you the ability to just acquire from different galleries and collectors. Um, and art dealers from around the country. So they're, they're the, the ones that I think are used um, and more popular are Live Auctioneer and Invaluable.com, but there are more portals out there. And like I said to you before, I don't want you to lose sight of this, that a number of auction houses are have developed their own portals from their websites in which you can participate um, in the uh, in the auctions that they have available, right? So listen, we've talked about a lot. You know, this I thought this uh, I'm, I'm talking to my to my my strategist and producer, thinking that this was a two part session. It could easily be a three part session. We've talked about a lot so far in in um, in, in in this presentation in this coachable moment about auctioning. Hey, folks. Um, I just want you to be educated, and I and yes, there are risks that are associated to participating in auctions. But if you do your due diligence and you pay um, close attention to the information that is available, and that you also ask for in additional information if you have any other questions, or even call the auction house and talk to uh, the the program associate that's associated with that particular auction. Get all the information in your arsenal to be able to make a solid decision as to one, whether or not you're going to participate in the auction for that piece, and two, what your value point or what your price point will be, what your maximum price point will be in order to the acquire, acquire the piece. And that will help you be a victorious either way. Um, either you will acquire the piece or or you won't because it goes past your price point. But you won't get caught up in the swirl and the dynamic and the dance of auctioning way past what you can afford. So here, here's some other things. And you say, well, Sheila, who should I try to acquire? And the uh, it, it, who, who should whose work should I try to acquire in the, in the African American space? Oh my goodness. So there's there's so many there's there's Romare Beard and anytime you go out on the auction um, on on live auctioning or or artsy or or invaluable you you will find Romare Beard work um, you you will even find Jacob Lawrence work you will find um, Lois Maylou Jones work you will find 
Um, in some instances, depending on the auction house, Norman Lewis work, you will find Elizabeth Catlett work. Um, you will find sometimes sculptures with her and sometimes you will find her print work. You will find John Biggers work. So a lot of those legacy uh, master artists or legacy artists that are out there, you will find their work um, through auctioning. Uh, now I will tell you, um, you will find Alma Thomas, you will find, um, you will find, who else will you find? Um, Palmer Hayden, you will find Doc Thrash. That's rare, but you will find it. You will find Betty Sarr. So what I'm saying is if you're interested, you will find those master artists, those legacy artists out there. So you see, with Sheila, I'm really, my collection really focuses on more contemporary artists. You will find contemporary artists out there as well. Um, maybe a little bit um, more remote of a chance that they'll be out there but they will be out there. I've gone out there and seen Macy, Mason Archie's work, Car Charlie Palmer's work I've seen out there. So you may, I've, I've seen um, Mel Edwards' work out there. I've seen um, a lot of your living legends and contemporary artists out there. Um, but I will tell you this, if you're looking for opportunities where you only want to focus on African-American art, Hey, there are two, there are a lot of auction houses that will sell, um, that will have auctions available with African-American artists. There are two auction houses that have auctions specifically African-American art. That's the only thing you will see in a particular auction. So Swan Art Galleries out of New York has about two or three times a year an African-American art um, auction. Um, they also have an African or a Black Americana or African-American uh, um, African Americana auction, which is, you know, um, writings and books and, and memorabilia from slavery to civil rights era, um, 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 Post slavery, all of the different areas in 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 sections, they will have. Sometimes they have art even during those auctions. But um, Swan is a is is has a very a variety of work available in their African American art auctions that go that happen about two or three times a year. Hey, check it out. Swan can get really pricey, but it's a good indicator of price point for the value of work. Now, the other, the other auction um, house is Black Art Auction. They have about three, maybe four or five auctions a year where they're looking at both sculptured work, just like Swan, and um, prints um, and original work, just like Swan. Listen, um, you, there's a variety of work that's available on both. I, you know, and I have participated in both and I've, I've acquired artwork from both. So, hey, listen, check this out. If, check them out if you want, um, if you want, both of them have their own portals. Both of them are on Invaluable and I can't remember whether they're on live. But listen, um, they are good for, it's a good indicator. People get excited. Now, let me just tell you about your competition and we're almost to the end of this segment. You, please be mindful that you are competing with collectors from all over the country. You're competing with museums. You're competing with colleges and universities who want to grow their collection. You're com competing with Fortune 500 companies that want to grow their collection, right? You're competing with um, celebrities that are collectors. So be mindful of like Carrie James Marshall went for like 20 plus, 30 plus million dollars a few years ago and Sean Puffy Combs was the person that was able to acquire that work. You are competing against Jay-Z, you're competing against Swiss Beats. I remember 
um, I remember participating in an um, in an auction, and I should say allegedly, but it, about Sean Combs, we know that he acquired Kerry James Marshall's work. That's documented, in fact. Um, I'll say allegedly for this next story. So I remember one time we were participating um, in there, um, at an auction house in an auction in, in Material Culture in Philadelphia. The name of the place is called Material Culture, and it was located in Philadelphia. And at that time, man, they had so many. They had Andrew Turner. They had um, they had Bomer Beard, and they I mean they had a bit of everybody for this auction. And I was not only was I participating for myself, I was also participating for a dealer friend of mine who had had something going on at that time and wasn't able to make it. And, you know, it was another friend of mine, a collector and dealer as well. And he lives in that area and he was there. And I'm online because I'm trying to get my pieces. And everything that I was bidding on, I was being outbid, and, and I went past my limit. I think I actually got two pieces that auction, but for the other pieces, I went way past my limit. And it was like a boom, 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 boom. You couldn't bid. It, yeah, it was a boom, 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 boom. You couldn't bid fast enough before somebody was already outbidding you. And so what ended up happening, I, I talked to my, one of my friends, my partner, he knows who he is. I said, dude, what was going on? Like, you couldn't get an edge of wood before you could even place your bid. They were boom, 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 they were all the way up. And he said, man, I, um, he, he said, Swiss Bees was at the auction. I was like, what? You know, so here's what, that, that was a life lesson for me. And I know some of you are laughing at me right now saying this girl's crazy. I don't know if Swiss Beast was at the auction or not. He told me Swiss Beast were at the auction, and then he told me that some of the um, artists in hip hop culture had representatives there bidding for them. Listen, that was an eye opener for me. I never make the assumption when I'm participating in an auction who else is interested in the piece in which I'm interested. Right? So keep that in mind. You can get some sleepers out there. I've gotten some really fantastic dynamic pieces at sleepers at small auction houses where they didn't know what they had and they lowballed it and I was able to get something. Small auction houses that are not, um, their specialty is not art, their specialty is antiques and estate sales. They didn't know what they had and I was able to benefit from that. You will find that, but in some of your major artists, your major, your major auctions that have some really dynamic work, yeah, your competition could be anybody. Your competition could be an Oprah Winfrey. Your competition could be a Tyler Perry. It could be anybody that is just as much a collector and just as much as passionate and just as much an enthusiast about art as you are now. I've covered a lot of information. Um, at some point, I will talk about how you can all wrap this up in a bow about art value. I think I'm going to do a segment about art value and I will touch on art value and how um, auctioning is a part of that value structure, right? But listen, this is what um, a lot of information has been provided to you. I hope it's helpful. Please let me know it's, if it's helpful. If there's more information you would like to receive about auctioning, um, please reach out to me via my website, via the comment section. This is tailor made to us as collectors and enthusiasts, particularly about African American art. Right, and just wanting you to avoid some of the pitfalls that are out there, want you to gain from some of the lessons I learned um, in learning how to navigate through auctioning as an art acquisition strategy. Now, I have prepared a, a, a deck for for as a as kind of like a uh, it's kind of like a an aid, if you will, right? And we will have that deck available for you and you can go back after you receive it and look at that and compare your notes um, and, and write some notes and, and whatever else. And again, I'm here for coachable moments all day. So if you would like to reach out to me, please feel free to 
do so. We're gonna try to get this um, this deck available to you without a cost associated to it on um, either YouTube or my website. So please stay tuned as we launch the next few um, coachable moments on how you can get access to this um, to this deck. Now, let me just say this, shameless plug. Um, I'm asking, I wonder if all of the subscribers on my YouTube channel are actually members of the Wondrous Work Tribe. Some of you have reached out to me and said, hey, she, hey, Dr. She, want to be a part of your tribe because I'm constantly sending information to my tribe members. Um, so if you would like to also receive this um, as a part of the tribe, hey, hit me up in in the on my Wondrous Works website and say, hey, Dr. She, I'm a YouTube subscriber. I'd like to be a part of your tribe. I'd like to know about your studio visits. I'd like to know about um, the different articles you've written. I'd like to know about your job aids for collecting. Um, and hey, it's a it's a free flowing of information. I don't hold anything back. Okay, so hey, check out my website. Leave your comments if you want to be a part of the tribe and you want to get notices about different events that are coming up and different opportunities that are available and and different bless me campaigns. Hey, just become a member of the Wondrous Work Tribe and we will make sure that you get you you a part of our family and a part of all of that. Thank you for your time and I look forward to sharing more with you. Have a blessed one.